Coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, Chromebooks versus iPads. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom and today I want to talk about Chromebooks versus iPads. A lot of schools are making choices about what devices to buy. Some of them are going one way, some are going the other way. I've for a long time been a huge advocate for iPads and I still think iPads are great, but I did want to take the opportunity and do a comparison of both just to see what uh, works in what conditions and I think that the answer has to be connected at least to what do you exactly want your devices to do. So when the first thing I want to talk about is the interface. What I loved about the iPads from the get-go is the fact that it had this touch interface that worked really really well, that responded to everything you do. You make things bigger, you make things smaller, everything with your hands and that's a fantastic interface especially useful when you're working with early childhood and students with disabilities. It gives them another way to access information that isn't necessarily connected to a keyboard. That's great. Uh, the other thing is, of course, working with Siri and using the voice interface to enter text or to do general operations on the device. Again, a huge uh, advantage to the iPad with the multiple ways you can input information. However, Chromebooks are fantastic because they have an attached keyboard. You don't have to buy an extra keyboard. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to connect it with Bluetooth or anything else. So you do uh, retain that ability to have keyboard with, and keyboarding skills are important for kids to get and to get fluent with and if they're doing a significant amount of composing on the computer the keyboard seems to be a choice that a lot of people are making so that's that's one difference so uh, on the interface in early childhood I would definitely go with iPads all the way to third or fourth grade but as kids get older and they need to do more composing a keyboard may be something you want to consider and again you can get keyboards for the iPads and they will work from a price perspective, Chromebooks are cheaper. And uh, I do want to make sure that we, we talk, when we talk about uh, price, we talk not just about the price per unit, but also how long units will last. And I don't think we have enough information yet about Chromebooks, at least I don't anymore. What I do know is iPads actually prove themselves a lot sturdier and lasting a lot longer than anybody expected. And a life expectancy of about four years is perfectly fine. I have iPads that old and they're working we use them in classrooms and they're working the only iPad that really didn't work uh, for quite that long was the iPad one because it didn't have a camera and that was a huge jump in uh, productivity but you can have them for a lot for a very long time so that's a huge advantage uh, we again we don't know about the Chromebook so that I think is an advantage for the iPads right now and again when you're considering price you have to consider also how long will you be able to use them Inaccessibility, really important accessibility, especially for students with disabilities or students who speak other languages. Um, both devices have some options, but the built-in options in the iPads are considerably better. The uh, reading, uh, everything that's on screen, the ability to do it with voice, the ability to use uh, the accessibility options, uh, differentiating the touch um, interface and all of that are fantastic on the iPads. If you, if you don't know all of this, we did have an older episode that talked about all the accessibility options on the iPad, so definitely go and look at that. But I think there's a definite advantage to the iPads when working with students with disabilities. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the availability of apps. So here, it really depends on what you want to do. There is a definite advantage to the iPads and to the Apple ecosystem when you talk about apps. There's just more apps, they work better, and there's just more history behind them, and there's just a huge diversity of apps in education. If you look at our old iPad in the classroom um, videos, you see just how many are out there, and we keep reviewing new ones. So there's a huge advantage to the iPads with educational apps. However, uh, Google does offer all of the Google apps for education, which are really, really nice. They offer a fantastic platform. Do they work on the iPads? Yes, but they will work better on the Chromebooks. So you do have to consider that. That, especially things like Google Earth will work a lot better on a, on a 
computer or a Chromebook than it does on the iPad. It works on the iPad and I love it on the iPad, but it does function a little bit better on a, on a Chromebook or a computer. So that's something to consider. I love Google Earth, so for me that's something that's really important. You have to consider how much you're attached to Google Apps for Education. That might swing you one way or the other. The other advantage that uh, Google has is in login. So login for Google is one login. Everything is open to you and that's really powerful and kids don't have to remember multiple uh, passwords. That's powerful. On the iPad, you would need, usually need a few other uh, logins to specific apps or to the Apple uh, ecosystem itself. And then you would need one for uh, Google if you're participating in Google Apps for Education. And, and so that's definitely an advantage to the Chromebook. Uh, from a security perspective, uh, the Google uh, universe is one thing, but we do know that Apple is actually a lot more secure for a variety of reasons. The ecosystem is a lot closer, which makes everything that happens on it a lot more protected from a privacy perspective. That's something to consider as well. Uh, finally, mobility and projection. Uh, two devices very, very different. Uh, you can take your Chromebook anywhere, but you always need a flat surface and it really calls for a table, whereas iPads are truly mobile. You can take them anywhere, you can take pictures with them, you can take them to a visit to the zoo, you can take them outside to an outside classroom and they're just as useful as they are in the classroom. So here in mobility, you really have to think, is this something I want kids to use only at home and then in the classroom? Then the Chromebook would be fine. I want them to be mobile and collect data in different ways, then you definitely want to go with something like the iPad that can that can leave and come back and they can move between classrooms with with very little problems with it and wireless projection right now works a lot better in the Apple ecosystem through uh, Apple TVs and does not really work you can wire any of the um, the Chromebooks but they don't just interface with a projection device in the classroom it's probably going to come soon but we're not there yet so the bottom line is that it really depends on what you want your devices to do. If you want true mobility, the security and all of the apps, you definitely go with the iPads. If you're working with early childhood, all the way to third grade, I would say the iPads have a huge advantage. Once you cross that boundary, or if you're really imagining just seat work, whether at home or at school, you definitely want to think about the Chromebooks. So this is our take on iPads versus Chromebook, and I'll see you next time on mobile learning in the classroom.